Hello everyone, welcome to Goddess Talk, our blog where I'm going to be sharing with you the story of what's happening to sacred feminine wisdom, indigenous culture, sacred sexuality and tantra in the court case here in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I wanted to share with you the idea of cult versus culture. Uh, the sacred sexuality movement, uh, the earth worshipping um, people here in the United States are frequently referred to as a cult because there are not that many people who practice this faith. I'd like to look at um, the idea that we do have a culture of sexuality in the United States and so I'd like to describe for you the culture of sex in the U.S. and then talk a little bit about uh, the people here in our temple and our church who have been referred to in the press and by the government as a cult. If we want to look at who are the taste makers and the greatest influence of sex in America, we might want to start um, with Hugh Hefner, who made a wonderful life for himself just by simply realizing and promoting the idea that intelligent men love to look at pictures of beautiful women in the nude. And that was kind of a no-brainer, and he was very successful with that. Um, moving along on the table of culture in America, where the power makers and decision makers are sitting, uh, we would meet Larry Flint. Mr. Flint took his um, court case to publish obscene materials all the way to the Supreme Court, and the highest court in our land agreed that he, Mr. Flint and others have a right to be as obscene as they want to be. And, of course, that opened the door uh, for the huge industry that we have now uh, of adult entertainment here in the United States. Newsweek reported a year ago that over 40 million people a day are logging on to sex sites, many of them from work, by the way. Um, so we do have people really indulging in um, visually erotic films. But, of course, uh, pornography is not going to teach you uh, about sex or lovemaking. It's just going to show you um, the part that's exciting and of course there's no relationship or education there. But this has become a mainstay of sex education in the United States. Also seated at the table of culture in sex in America, uh, you would find um, the churches and you would find uh, in particular um, the we have a number of our leaders, male leaders in the church, who have been found to be having affairs uh, or possibly have been seen with prostitutes, and of course their ministry is in a wreck. Uh, moving on at the table of culture of sex in America, we would have the Roman Catholic Church, who has for 2,000 years been saying that the only form of sexuality that is okay with God is married procreative sex. And of course, today we're realizing that this maybe isn't true, especially with the overpopulation that we see here in the world today. So, and of course, we don't have to go into great detail, uh, but everyone knows that uh, many of our churches, including the Roman Catholic Church, have been dealing with uh, sex scandals, the pedophilia crisis. Uh, in April of 2010, uh, the Pope and the Cardinals from Rome issued what they called the list of the most grave sins. And on this list, uh, they said that yes, it's a sin for uh, a priest to have sex with a child. And it's also a sin to attempt to ordain a woman in spiritual authority. And this is important because if you aren't allowing women to speak on behalf of the Creator, uh, their voice isn't going to be heard. Women's opinions and their truth about sex just simply is irrelevant because women are not like God and men are. So if you move around the table of culture of sex in America, you would get to the military and we've had the Pentagon scandal where 250 workstation computers were found with child pornography on them. Uh, we have the recent um, very sad news around General Petraeus, and he won't be able to serve with all his wisdom because his natural magnetic need to be received um, wasn't happening for him as he was in service to his country. He literally was separated from his wife. Um, so this is very sad, and then there's been a documentary released uh, this year that said that many of the women who sign up to serve in the armed forces um, 
can expect to be assaulted, sexually assaulted by their fellow soldiers. And this is a real problem. So this is what we see um, a lot of in the news, the culture of sexuality in America. Of course, there's the Penn State sex scandal. And really, not more than a week or two goes by without seeing a fresh new sex scandal at the highest levels in our power institutions. So, and then I'd like to look for just a minute at the underground world of sexuality in the United States. We have an enormous uh, sex for money trade uh, that's very underground. I call this the goddess in the underground because what you have is men who desire to make a connection with a woman and so they go to a strip club, they hire a prostitute or an escort, they go to a massage parlor where instead of um, leaving parts of their body out, uh, the, the practitioner, uh, the healer is going to give touch to their entire body. This may cause energy to arise and the energy may move by the end of that uh, healing time. And this, of course, is illegal. With the temple, we had been told on a number of occasions that maybe we should just turn our transformation chambers uh, into little porn studios because if we filmed it and our seekers and initiates became the lead actor in a porn movie and our priestesses and healers became the lead actress in a porn movie uh, that we might be legal. Uh, and I've always said no, I think that this is a very intimate and private exchange and I don't think uh, that filming it um, creates a sacred context. I think that it's too intimate for that. We view the transformation chamber at the temple as the equivalent of a confession booth at the Roman Catholic Church. It should be extremely private and um, it's between the seeker, the guide, uh, the initiate, and uh, their soul's uh, higher purpose. And the idea of entering the transformation chamber with a guide is to have a genuine and authentic experience of your own life energy. So when you look at cult versus culture and you see all of the influences that are seated at the tables of power around sex in America, I'd like to ask you just this one question. Is sacred sexuality something that we just can't allow to be seated at the table with all of these other influences? Is the feminine voice, tantra, the idea that God is feminine as well as masculine, the idea that our body is a holy gift from the goddess, really there isn't room for us in the dialogue at the table? Really you don't want to allow people to access hands-on, wholesome sexual healing and energy guidance. I, I just find this to be astonishing and I believe that uh, the time has come for change. We need to have access to committed people who are uh, skilled, educated, and passionate about healing through the life force energy. If you'd like to um, know more about what we're doing in our court case, check back here at Goddess Talk.